Now, this subject is very, very interesting uh, because when we talk about uh, the creativity, innovation, the solutions to the problems, then it is necessary that we identify the our stars. There are four types of employees and these employees are some of them are the workhorses. Hmm? They are having the high performance and the uh, uh, as compared to the their potential, uh, the performance is high and potential is comparatively low. But there are the employees, those who are having the high performance and the high potential and the such employees, they are called the stars employees. So, whenever we are talking about the stars employees, they are called the talented employees. Now, the organization, any organization grows on the basis of their talent pool, on the basis of the employees, those who are very creative, risk taking, enterprising and they bring the organization at the front row and for this purpose, this course has been designed accordingly. So, there is a difference between the human resource management and the talent acquisition and management. So, when we talk about manpower planning, so manpower planning is applicable to all the employees of the organization right from the 1 to 100, every employee is covered under the manpower planning. But HR manager when empowers somebody to take the decisions and that particular employee, that manpower takes a such a decision, simple example is the new product development. I would like to also mention one case study here that is whenever we are talking about the sales of the increasing the washing machine and then the sales of the uh, washing machine was increased by suggesting to the dhabawalas to prepare the lassi. Now this type of the solutions that is totally different than their traditional the identifying the client uh, customers and then uh, client segment and then uh, marketing and then advertising and all no, no traditional ways, but something new. So, whenever we are talking about something new that is the talent identification. Now, question arises that is the employees are your assets, they are not liabilities. So, more are the talented employees, better will be the assets, you will be rich, you means organization will be rich, right, human capital will be strong. So, this particular subject talks about the how to acquire, how to develop, what compensation or rewards to be paid to the talented employees, hmm? a normal compensation is there for as per the scales. But when you are talking about the talented employees, then there should be certain special promotional schemes. So, those who cross that particular barrier, they have been promoted at the very high level. It is not in the regular level like a ladder, they are going from the A to B, B to C, C to D, A1 to B1, B1 to C1, C1 to D1, it is not like that. Rather than it is that is jumping from the A1 to D1. So, how to identify and how to give them the compensation or promotions or how to maintain the relationship with them, how to keep the engagement of such employees, how to make them the optimistic, how they make the happy. So, all these aspects that we will see into this particular subject that is the talent acquisition and management of talent because there is one tendency. Here I would like to warn you that the talent will may not be continue for long time in one organization. So, it is required that is the you are able to retain them. I understand you cannot retain them for long time, but that time period that we can stretch. If you are able to stretch that particular time period, then definitely you will be able to get the maximum output. It is not the physical output. It, 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 it is the intellectual output, the intellectual capital, the social capital and that will maximize the profit of this particular uh, employees, those who are called the talent. So, I have tried to design this course in such a way because there are very few books are available and then I have collected the material from these uh, journals, articles, handbooks of talent management which has been shared with you and all. So, uh, that, that uh, I have tried to collect uh, the all the material and hopefully maybe after some time 
um, I may be able to come out with the uh, textbook uh, for the talent acquisition and management is there. However, number of handbooks are available. So, you will get those particular informations. So, what we will be discussing? We will be discussing about that is what is the talent is composed of, evolution of HR, what is talent management, transformational dimensions of talent management that is very, very important. That is how you are transforming your main power. So, it is also a development, learning and development normally we talk about in HRM learning and development. So, question arises how you are able to convert that uh, learning and development process to convert into the talented employees and does it depend on the heredity or environment or situation that we will be discussing in this particular subject. So, can we convert an ordinary employee to extraordinary employee and that this subject will help you how to convert your uh, main power from the ordinary to the extraordinary talent management process that process we will talk about that is how to manage the talent journey towards the people engagement because you might be having the uh, talented uh, people employees, but what is important their engagement as Ophali has mentioned that is the engagement means vigor absorption and dedication. So, like a naughty boy in the class a naughty boy is intelligent when then then we say naughty he is very active hyperactive but it is why then why we say the naughty it is not in that direction it is not in the proper direction that intellectual capability has not been moved towards the right direction and therefore it is required that is the, there should be the people engagement and the this engagement how to engage this type of the intellectual uh, capital that we will be discussing then we will take the help of the case study and then the talent management benchmark practices that we will be discussing uh, in the detail. Now here I always talk about a model of the success that is the ability into motivation into opportunity A into M into O. When we talk about the ability that is the capabilities, what capabilities hard skills. You see uh, when your employee will be happy or your boss will be happy or your family will be happy or your friends will be happy when you will do your job in the best way. Hmm? It is not the question of only boss, it is not the question of uh, uh, only professional role rather than it is a question of the personal role also. So, whenever we are talking about the personal role and that in personal role you are doing any particular job you should know your job. What is that job? That is a hard skills. So, if you are a chef or if you are preparing a dish for your child uh, at home, so that that should be a perfect one a close to perfect one. So, it, everybody enjoys and child says thank you mom. So, therefore, in that case it is the the basic concept is know your job nothing can be compensated by knowing your job. So, that is to be learned because you see the excellence is infinite. Nobody can say that I have reached to the excellent, but that effort and that uh, direction will also inform us that yes you are on the right direction that is the, you are developing your hard skills for your job. So, that devotion that will make the developing your capabilities. Second one is the leadership. Now, you see there will be the end type of uh, employees as I was talking about the workhorses and stars. How will lead them? Because that is the leadership of talent management. I will not go into the detail of the leadership models of the um, managerial greed, Fiddler's model hmm, or the Hershey and Blanchard's model. I will not go in much detail of that rather than I would like to go to the leadership of the talented people. To lead the talented people it requires different style of leadership please try to understand your same style of leadership like in the manager grade people oriented and production oriented, but which one and to whom it will be applicable and how 
and what uh, it totally different I will be taking one session on the leadership of the talent management people. So, the, that particular leadership of the talent management people right that is totally different style than your ordinary leadership models it will be part of that it will not be the isolation it will be integration. So, you have to use those traditional model of leadership, but your process your method the way you will be interacting with your the talented people you have to tune up if you are flexible enough then only you will be able to lead them otherwise conflict they will not be the followers there will be the conflict rather than leader and followers and one day talent will resign talent will go away. So, again the point is this that is the how you are able to manage your followers talented followers. Then next is the capabilities is the business and pro, uh, professional this is very very important you have to run your business in a professional way those days you have gone that I am the owner and you are the servant. Now, everybody is having the share on profit ESOP employee share on profit. Now, the designations have changed the senior positions designations are partners partner means equal and therefore, your business and professionals that requires to be changed and that you are required the human factors. What are the human factors your value systems when I say the partner you are giving the respect the equal respect to him you are treating him as the he is your equal shareholder. So, his share on profit is equal you have to justify and that is a kindness that is a consideration those are the human factors which you have to demonstrate at your workplace. So, for this capabilities model you have to play different roles hmm? you must be knowing in management there are three roles interpersonal role informational role and decision making roles. So, therefore, your roles are to be played your roles and your capabilities that should match the roles of the job job which the what is a job job is the group of task which you are performing. So, there might be the conflict role conflict between the job project roles and the project roles are there is for a particular period of time they are short term they are not very long term, but as an employee your role is for the long term and there should not be any conflict the service template that is the rights duties uh, conduct and uh, the standard standing order act all will be applicable here service template will be applicable accordingly you have to perform and finally, it is the positions that is at what position you are working. So, therefore, if you are working in a particular position you have to play that role. So, position can be at the front line position can be at the middle level position can be at the senior level and therefore, those roles are to be classified and to be understood according to the positions. The third dimension which you see here that is about the people. So, under these uh, trends in the human capital management the emerging talent management imperatives and knowledge infusion white paper it talks about that is the uh, people are having the skills and competencies. Now, you see that is the job from the role hmm, and then when you are talking about uh, this particular job you are connecting with the hard skills and then you are talking about the skills and competencies. So, that you have to connect. So, how to connect that is a particular job right a skill job knowing that particular knowledge of those skills and developing the competencies. So, roles capabilities and people this is called a talent DNA dear friends. 
when you are interacting with this all these aspects hmm, the connecting. So, therefore, when you are connecting all these aspects you will find that is these roles capabilities and people they are integrated. Similarly, you will find that is the talented people with the experience. Now, again right from the childhood we are writing whether the science is a boon or when and therefore, we say if it is rightly used right boon or when. So, there your experience it is your strength or it is your weakness and because your strength if I say the I am having the 34 years of experience. So, you may question that is sir are you aware of the latest knowledge right. So, therefore, that experience is the strength also and it is a weakness also. So, how to convert that weakness into strength by upgrading the knowledge update knowledge. So, if you are upgrading in updated you are relevant. So, it is you are not dinosaur. So, therefore, in that case it is the experience that, that is helping persons to develop the talent. What type of the exposure you had? Hmm? Whenever you introduce somebody you say that person is travel abroad, this is having the hobby of the traveling, he has visited this, this, these places. Hmm? What it means? It means that he is having a good exposure. That exposure is there then definitely the person will be more talented, more exposure better will be the understanding, better will be the understanding person will be better talented. Then the education, you cannot ignore the role of education. So, people may forget that what they have studied, but what they have imbibed during that process of education, they will never forget. So, therefore, the talented people are also recognized by their qualifications. So, if they have got the top notch qualifications, you appreciate them, there is ye hai, ye bande ko knowledge hai, ye, ye IIT se aya hai, ye IIM se aya hai, national institute se aya hai, CFT se aya hai, kisi bhi reputed institute se aya hai. So, therefore, in that case that is the education is becoming very, very important. Next is the products. So, they have what, what type of the ultimately what you are delivering the services. So, it is the what output outcome is there product means output outcome is there. If you are having the proper outcome uh, output right then definitely you will be able to go for this developing the talent uh, talent DNA. The talent DNA will be roles capabilities development and the people develop the capabilities of the people, understand their roles and de develop the people with the help of their skills, experience, exposure, education and output products are output. Now, many people will say that is the how the talent acquisition and management is different from the HR. Is it the HR management? It is not HR management, it is something different. What is the difference is that we will come. I remember when I was the labor officer uh, in 1986 to 90 and then, then it, it, it was the called the personal department. Hmm? That time one book was very uh, I also did the personal management and industrial relations. So, that personal management personal department was there which, uh, which was normally taking a, uh, care of the recruitment, personal files, disciplinary action, time office, administration and this type of functions were there. And uh, there was not uh, much uh, training and development, not uh, a STD model of the American Society of Training and Development. So, this was the business function. So, in this like I mentioned a payroll system, payroll system means it was a time of his job. I remember that is that time there was a computer of the big wall size, uh, IBM computer of the big wall size computer was there and then there we had to feed the data. The time of his was uh, taking the data to the computer center and computer center was putting the data in that big size of the computer. Huh? That was the time payroll system was there and that, that was about the uh, personal department. But later on actually in late 1960s you will find that is the ISTD model has come hmm? and therefore, in that model that is your talk about the training and development. 
here you will find it is the uh, uh, give, it was given by the American Society for Training and Development. So, that strategic HR was introduced and this uh, strategic HR was not restricted only for these uh, uh, the uh, time office, uh, recruitment, disciplinary action, standard standing order act, factories act, labor laws, no not only that and IR not only up to that right, because it was coming from the manufacturing industries, especially textile industries. So, my unit was the textile industry, uh, my first unit was just textile industry. Later on I worked with the Shiram group, when I worked into the Shiram group in 1992, so, then, then it, it, it was about the L and D training and development, learning and development what you call nowadays, then that time it was the training and development. So, that, that traditional function of textile industry has moved towards the development of the manpower and that was the strategy of the HR department. So, HR department was taking the strategies that is they were supposed to go to recruit the people, identify the people and that time also we were using the psychometric test, psychometric scale was used. So, in that psychometric test and scale it was that is the recruitment was the uh, uh, done and then analysis was done, psychologists were there in the part of the HR panel in the recruitment to identify that this person will be asset, through asset or he will put the liability for the organization, right. So, that, that recruitment practices were there. Then L and D, learning and development was there, many techniques were there, on job technique, off job technique, case studies, decision, actually what is the need of the organization. You see, always you see that is the how you develop and you develop with that learning and development. How? For example, nowadays the, the uh, HR people, HR department or in all other departments also they have to focus more on the analyst, analysis because there is a data, data converts into information, info con information converts into knowledge, knowledge converts into the wisdom and wisdom converts into truth that is a pyramid, data into information, information into knowledge, knowledge into wisdom, wisdom into truth. Now, that particular anal analyst will do that information into knowledge that is a decision making skills. To convert that decision making skills, developing those decision making skills competency that role of the L and D is very, very important. So, that learning and development department that is will be the part of the strategic HR and they will take care that is the they are using their manpower in a with the best output, best manner. Organization design theories, now here I would like to take the case study of GE in the G capital then with G electrical uh, when you are converting uh, uh, that uh, the bureaucratic structure into the performance structure. So, it was totally the redesigning of the organization. So, what is the need? You want a slim organization structure or you want the fat organization structure? It is your choice and on the basis of that choice you will find that is the organizations are designed. You want the bureaucratic number of layers vertical or you want the horizontal that is a parallel organization structure. So, strategic HR will be taking care of those organization design that was the one of the major functions. Now, you see the then concept of CTC cost to company. Hmm? So, it is not the in, in the payroll system it was the cash in hand per day wages that was the concept payment of wages act 1936. So, that was the concept, but now it has been changed and total compensation when you are talking about uh, the uh, package for the freshers 1 CR package per annum, so you will be surprised that is uh, this boy knows nothing uh, and then he is a fresher and he is getting that much, but dear friends that is not the fixed pay that is a variable pay and that is called the total compensation. So, that minimum salary will not be much in one CR that is the salary per month salary cash in hand what you say are the, uh, the salary slip 
that will be con having the headings which will be total of maybe the 25 lakhs per year. Rest of the 75 lakhs is based on performance. How do you perform? If you extend your performance, you can reach up to the 1 CR. That is a commitment of the organization. That is a total compensation, C to C, cost to company, or the house is given. Like for example, in the Bombay, if the any company is giving you, you the flat, so cost will be increasing very high. So, that will cause cost to the employee, that is a cost to the company basically. Cost of the employees to the company, cost to company. Then mode of channel, that is the communications. It is very, very important. So, in, because uh, when I will talk about the current scenario, so, this mode of communication will totally change. Traditionally, it was a memo, it was a letter, right? And nowadays, you are talking about the email, you are talking about the messages, you are talking about the using the social media to communicate. And therefore, in that case, you will find that is this total compensation and communications that will be that will be changing. Next will be the talent management that is the competency management is there. In the competency management you will find that is the how you are developing the competency of your employee. Nowadays I am working on the cash, knowledge, attitude, skills and habits and then in cash model you will find that is the what knowledge level is required at the competency, what attitude is required what type of attitude do you have? So, that is the po positive attitude is there, team building attitude is there, understanding your, you understand the problems of others, you have, have the uh, empathy with others, hmm? sympathy is there, empathy is there, concern is there, socialization is there, that is the emotional intelligence part. So, therefore, you, you are developing that competency of IQ plus EQ plus SQ intelligent quotient, emotional quotient and spiritual quotients. So, that talent management means that is you are developing the, your employee to the next level. So, from strategic HR, you are taking them to the talent management and taking them talent management by the developing the competency, it is making them more capable to take the decision making process. Capabilities development, my first slide, capabilities development and therefore, that capability development that starts with the competency. Now, here the second in the talent management, which is very, very important that is a performance management. You see ultimately, why are all these issues we talk about? We talk about the performance of the individual and performance of the organization organizational performance or productivity that is the objective. We study all these practices for what? So, that we can get the maximum output that is our concern in a easiest way, in a comfortable way, not by the rod and not by the disciplinary action, right? in the easiest way and therefore, we talk about the performance management and we do that performance management. How do you manage? Here I will also like to mention that is the performance management here, it also includes the potential management. Because whenever we talk about the talent, I focus more on the potential dear friends. Then the, it is the HR's role to extract that potential giving the direction that leadership you talk about and the direction you give about and then they, they perform. So, child in the class what he can give the maximum, the teacher has to focus and understand and learn. And then the pedagogy system is to be used, so that the, he gives the maximum output. The same principle applies uh, in the family also, same principle applies in the organization also. So, what, what we, we provide? We provide the enabling conditions in the talent management to develop the human capital, to nurture the talent, it is very important. You provide that environment, that environment is called the enabling conditions, enabling conditions dear friends. 
that environment is very very important. Please provide that environment to nurture the talent. But the leaders, parents, teachers, those who are having this responsibility, they are having their own personalities also. And if you are lucky enough, so you get that uh, personality which believes in the parent ego, adult ego and then nurture the child. So, the, in that case it is the performance management to convert into the potential management ability to identify what a maximum person can do, why some persons are able to do the great jobs, why some are not and, and that particular focus that has to be identified, practice, bring the culture in the organization. Like I always give the examples that is the when the new married daughter in law enters into the in law's house right and then it is a totally new culture and the daughter in law has been searched out of the thousands uh, that matrimonies.com's uh, websites and all these things and finally searched and finally got uh, married and then she is entering. But after one month you find that is daughter in law keeps on saying to husband no, no you are better to perform in the another city. So, let us shift to the another city not with your parents. <laughs> so, so, therefore, that, that converting that potential that enabling conditions that is very very important. So, one of the my PhD scholar has identified that is the research that people do not leave the bosses and do not leave the organizations they leave the bosses. So, daughter in law does not leave the husband they leave the mother in law. <laughs> So, therefore, in that case it, it, it is the that identifying, identifying the performance and potentials and if you are not able to go for this particular uh, aspect then it becomes very very important to go for the succession planning. If the succession planning is there you have to see that is the not to bring the second daughter in law, <laughs> I am not saying please do not create the analogy unnecessary analogy and uh, be careful. So, therefore, in that case succession planning successor, who is the successor and therefore, the successor who can build and that person he reaches to the next height in the organization. So, that uh, the bow becomes the buddy bow and now you are bringing the chote bow. So, therefore, in that case the new employees, new employees enter into the organization and when they enter into the organizations the, then uh, you have to see that is the, your earlier employees they reach to the higher positions. Otherwise, you will keep on saying that is the remove these uh, employees, what to do with these old employees and they are liabilities. But do not forget I have mentioned experience is also a strength. So, if you say that is the old people are the liabilities I will not appreciate right. So, therefore, in that case it is becoming very very important that is the what you are able to create that succession planning. So, what I would like to mention that you, you see that is how this evolution of HR has done with the period of time. So, in the traditional textile industries time it was a payroll systems personal management and in the personal management then you shifted to the recruitment and then it is HR portals uh, that is the uh, in uh, you shift to the technology. So, you are creating the HR portals and HR portals you are getting the facilities and benefits and services then the compensation and the learning management this is also a very interesting point to which I have mentioned L and D that is the learning management is there. In the talent management the first and foremost the part is the performance management identify the talented people and manage their performance. So, that will make them the highly potential. So, you are converting those work horses work horses into the stars you are not converting those workhorses into the problem children. What is the problem children? 
that is those who are having the high potential and low performance they are the problem children so when i say naughty boy there in the class that is the high potential iq is high but performance is less so therefore that is becoming the uh, 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 the uh, the problem children and there will be certain employees those to whom you cannot apply the talent management practices so they will be dead wood low performance and low potential jequel has given this formula that is a 20 70 and 10 so 10 20 are the stars 70 are, 70 are the mediocre and 10% are those who who are not contributing to the development of the organization so therefore that managing the talent you have to also see you are having succession planning creating the second line so that when the first line is promoted second line is checking and like this you are going for the succession planning competency management developing the competencies abilities system integration so whole thing is for the common objective and goal and that common objective and goal that will be creating the competencies then systems integration that is the how they are integrating the whole systems and finally leadership development is there so when we talk about the leadership development how the process is to be done in the talent management process that we will talk in our next session so thank you thank you very much